Zion Lutheran Church of Wilton, Iowa invites you to worship with them. We are your neighbors and friends in Christ. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to give praise to God for the victory he has won for us through his life, death, and resurrection. This morning we're using the order of Matins on page 219. And let us begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn. Open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father.
has sanctified us in the true faith. The Lord has sanctified us in the true faith. How can a young man keep his way pure? by guarding it according to your word. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. With my lips I declare all the just decrees of your mouth. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways.
The Old Testament reading for this, the 14th Sunday after Trinity, is from Proverbs chapter 4. Hear, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. This is the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. This is from Galatians chapter 5. But I say... Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. 
O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Have our children come forward for the children's message. Well, good morning. You know this text, we usually have it at Thanksgiving. It comes up another time during the church year, and now it's here at this time of church year, the 14th Sunday after Trinity. But you really, when you read this thing, everybody kind of jumps and says, oh, that's about being thankful or not being thankful. But this passage is much more than that. In fact, it's kind of given us some instructions. Is that right? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I think maybe you might be right in the fact that we should place it like this. Yeah. But this passage talks about us also doing this. Yeah. It's talking about how we praise God. You know what Jesus talked about there with the, the leper that came back and gave praise and thanks to him, to God? That's what Jesus said. Where are the others? Was there only one that came back and praised God? What, they, what he was saying is this person recognized him to be who he really is. God in the flesh. And his lips spoke what was in his heart. Do you know it's possible that we human beings don't get our lips and our heart doing the same thing all the time? Have you ever gotten a present, a real nice present you really liked, and you take it and you're so excited about, about it that you're busy with it, and you forget something? What is it that you forget? Huh? Sometimes, I didn't hear it. Thank you. Yeah, we don't say thank you. We're so excited about it. Our heart shows that we're really thankful we got this. But we forgot to speak it to the person who gave it to us. And sometimes mom and dad will say, did you forget something? And then you'll say, oh, thank you. <laughs> then you get it connected, right? Heart and lips are saying the same thing. We were created by God to have lips, to have a mouth. You know what it's for? To give glory and praise and thanks to God. To speak it. To speak about God to others, about what he has done for us. Because when we have such a great gift that we've gotten from God through our Lord Jesus... We have something in our hearts to speak about with our mouths, right? And they should be connected. What we feel in our hearts, we should speak with our mouths to God. Thanks. What do we thank God for? The leper thanked him because he was healed, right? That's a good thing to thank God for. We've been healed, too. Don't we have a bad sickness? In fact, everybody has it. The sickness of what? 
sin. Yeah. And Jesus has healed us from our sin sickness. He died on the cross, take away all our sins. He washed us in our baptism, removing all those sins. So that we could speak praises about him to God, to, to him, and about what he has done for us. God has loved us, cared for us, looked after us, given us great gifts, moms, dads, our church, and more importantly, himself. As in baptism, he made you his child, didn't he? So he straightened out at our baptism our hearts and made them his, free from sin, so that the lips he gave us can speak his praise and tell others what he has done for us. That's what it's all about. Do you speak praise to God? Sometimes. How about in church? Isn't that what we do with our hymns? Right? Isn't that what we do with our liturgy when we speak back what God has told us? That's why we have the liturgy. Because God there is teaching us how to thank him. What to say to him. And so we use God's word and repeat it. Glory be to God on high. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Those are words he teaches us how to say, thank you, God, for everything you've done for me. So sing it out when we sing, okay? All right, go back to your class. Bonds and dance. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I think we totally miss the point when we look at this gospel reading as we hear it several times during the church year and think, oh yeah, that's all about how we are to be thankful and it's teaching us to not be unthankful. I don't think, I really can't imagine any of those lepers not having a heart full of gratitude toward Jesus Christ. I mean, I can't imagine it. One minute they're living with a body that is grossly decaying before their eyes, forced to live apart from their, their loved ones, no future, no hope, but then calling out to Jesus for mercy and receiving from the Master that gift of healing through his word. He didn't even touch them. Skin suddenly restored, soft as a baby's bottom, beautiful, whole again. I'm sure any and all of them were as thankful as could be that Jesus had crossed their path and brought them healing. Indeed, they experienced what we heard in the words from Proverbs this morning, that 
healing, to, came, his words bring healing to all flesh. But if the problem isn't ingratitude in this text, then what exactly does Jesus find wanting in those nine, and yet praises in that one Samaritan who came back? Listen again to the words of our text. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face before Jesus, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And then what did our Lord say? We're not, we're not, not uh, ten cleansed, where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give glory to God? Except for this foreigner. Did you hear it? The text isn't just about feeling thankful. It's about giving thanks and praise, or more literally, giving glory to God. Maybe there's one lesson we learn too well. You see, with us sinful human beings, it is possible, as I told the children, for our heart and our mouths to become disconnected. So that our heart says one thing and our mouths say another. This is what God condemned through Isaiah the prophet when he wrote, This people draws near me, near to me with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. We've mistakenly concluded from that, well, that it's just the heart that God is concerned about. That if we're properly thankful in our hearts, well, that's enough. But that's to mistake his words through Isaiah. He's not only concerned about what goes on in our heart, He's vitally interested also in what comes out of our mouth, in the words that come tripping off over our lips. That mouth of ours and those lips were created by him so that we might sing his praises and celebrate his goodness and tell the world what he has done. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. That's what David said in Psalm 51. That's what we began our service with this morning. Created to praise. That's what we are. And if there is a first commandment to guard against the sins of the heart going astray, and there is, there's also a second commandment to guard against the lips going astray. Going in the opposite direction from our God. And he adds the eighth commandment to guard against our lips going astray in the opposite direction from our neighbor. All ten of these lepers began well. They knew that in their affliction they should lift up their voices to the master. They did, asking for mercy. How often can we relate to that? When times are bad for us, it seems more much more natural to pray, doesn't it? I mean, after all, when we don't have anywhere else to go, we're so thankful that we have been given the name of God to call upon in the day of trouble. But then there's the joy of his answer. We call, he responds. He answers and delivers us. He does so 
in order that, as Psalm 50 says, I will deliver you and you will glorify me. And that's precisely where we fall flat. We think it's enough to be thankful to God in our heart. Let's leave our thanksgiving there and be spiritual about it all. But God isn't into that kind of spirituality. He wants those lips to be opened and praise to be flowing forth. Now understand me aright. He doesn't desire that because he's insecure in himself and he needs someone to keep telling him all the time how great he is. That's a bunch of nonsense. He wants it because that's how we come into our own as true and full human beings. We do what we were created to do. He created us to enjoy him forever. And what we enjoy, we praise. We glorify. We say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the person who trusts in him. It is the conviction of the Holy Church that in Jesus Christ, each one of us has been given reason to open our lips and let our praises pour forth to God every moment of every day. We confess this often before this altar. It is indeed meet, right, and salutary at all times and in all places to give thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What is meat, right, and salutary is not a feeling of thankfulness deep down in our hearts, hidden there, certainly should be there. What is meat, right, and salutary, though, is an explosion of our, from our lips of that thanks and praise. Mercy was what the lepers received. But oh, how it pales in response to what he has done for you and me. Upon the cross, he suffers and dies in order that no sin will ever be able to accuse us. He destroys all our sin by forgiving it, every last bit of it. And from the grave, he arises in incorruption so that death will never, ever be the final word over us. And in baptism, he has washed away every sin. He has adopted us as his own child. He has given us his name. And he has given it for time and eternity. In absolution, he speaks to us personally a word of love and acceptance that, it is, that is as valid on earth as it is in heaven. And in the Holy Supper, he reaches out to us and gives us the unfathomable gift of his very body and blood. Nothing less than the sacrifice once offered for us on Calvary, now given into our mouth for the forgiveness of sins and for union with him. His pledge of life undying. Just think about it. 
The lepers, well, they got a few more years to live on this earth. We have been given eternity with our Heavenly Father. So in view of the huge mercy that is ours, the Lord Jesus invites and summons us today to use our mouth, to open our lips, to join the Samaritan in giving glory and praise to God incarnate in the flesh. And the liturgy is there to help us. It's there to teach us how to train our lips to glorify God so that we might learn how to offer the sacrifice of praise. Glory to God in the highest. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And I know you can think of more than that. We who have received through his holy cross and resurrection a life that death can never destroy, a pardon from sin that can never be defaced, are learning to praise as we join the angels and archangels and all the saints in falling down before him and singing, Glory be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will ever be. It will be. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We arise and use our lips to sing our canticle hymn.
we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. O oh Lord, keep your church with your perpetual mercy, and because of our frailty we cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the innumerable blessings you have bestowed on us, especially for the revelation of your will and grace in Jesus Christ, your Son. Preserve for your church the pure doctrine of your saving word, Raise up pastors to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Christ's name. And fill all your baptized children with your spirit and his fruits. In your mercy, remember the enemies of your church. Grant them repentance and amendment of life, that they would know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be joined to the communion of your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, we give you thanks for our president, our national and state governments, and our judges, and we pray that they would defend and protect life from the womb to the grave. We give thanks also for all those whose duty it is to protect and serve in our communities. Watch over them as they carry out their duties and protect them and us from violence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious Lord, we implore you to visit the sick, the suffering, the homebound, the grieving, and all who stand in need, especially Keith, Janet, Shirley, Matthew, John, Andy, Ed, Mary, Beth, Esther, Barbie, Pastor Lutz, Hazel, and we also add Verna Dinkman. Whatever their trials, have mercy on them and comfort them with the knowledge that nothing can separate them from the love you have for them in Christ Jesus our Lord. Although we are not worthy of none of the things for which we pray, we ask that you grant them all to us by grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Be sure to note the designated verses we sing of our last hymn. Good morning to all of you, and welcome to our guests and visitors this morning. The uh, announcements are there in your bulletin. Several of them I want just to make sure you take time to read. The one concerning uh, the uh, uh, window project that we are having. Uh, we are blessed to have been given almost half of it uh, as a grant, and so we need to pick up the rest of it. And I know that we want to preserve these beautiful windows uh, so that they can be here for years to come. And so uh, please consider that as you uh, give your extra offerings this year. Uh, the pizza thing will be on now, so get your forms up and going. Uh, on the 6th of October, the first Sunday in October, we're going to have a uh, special presentation via computer streaming, I guess, uh, of the missionary that we have in Spain telling us about that mission and encouraging us to kind of help out in that area where we, can, where we see fit. And uh, that will be during the Bible class time, so plan on staying and hearing his uh, presentation. Uh, we're also having a potluck that Sunday, so... Uh, plan on that as well. Um, I guess that's about it, unless there's somebody else that has an announcement. Choir is practicing, uh, so we're waiting to hear from them again and enjoy that. I want to give a special thanks to Malia Parrott for helping me out with my uh, presentation this morning for the children's sermon. So thanks very much. I can't draw, so... 
heart I might have got. The lips I couldn't even think of. So I was glad I had somebody here that I could just say, can you do this for me? And they did. God's blessings to each and every one of you. Contents and views expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this cable company or its commission.